Tauranga Animal Welfare Campaigner Ellie Maynard will stop at nothing to get dogs off the menu in countries like Korea and the Philippines. In 2001, she presented a petition to the UN signed by more than 4 million people worldwide asking that it classify dogs as not for human consumption. And she's just got back from undertaking a dog rescue in the Philippines. Documentary makers Ingrid Leary and Peter Takapuna were there. A warning, the story contains some graphic images. They're purebreds, stolen pets, street dogs. They bear scars from their illegal capture. I've got pets, and to think of my pet in that situation, and these dogs are stolen pets. But these are the lucky ones, rescued on their way to slaughtermen working for Filipino restaurants. They'll live their lives out here, and some will even be adopted out as pets. Each year, hundreds of Filipinos die from rabies, many of them through eating dogs like these. There was a case here in the Philippines where a three-year-old girl was given dog meat and the dog was rabbit at a wedding party. She'd lost the front two teeth. The rabies virus went up through that root canal into her brain and that child died in agony four days later. Tauranga animal welfare campaigner Ali Maynard set up Sirius, a New Zealand organisation to get dogs out of the human food chain. She has spent tens of thousands of dollars of her own money lobbying Asian governments and the UN to ban the eating of cats and dogs. Partly through her efforts, the Filipino government passed tough new laws last year to put an end to dog trading for human consumption. But it still continues. I'm just trying to work out who's in charge here, whether it's this one. Mm -hmm. These two yeah. here, <laughs> yeah. New Zealand police dog handler Chris Taylor has joined her for this trip to share his specialist knowledge about animal behaviour. We all travel to the Northern Mountains to help the founder of the Filipino-based Animal Kingdom Foundation, Charles Wartenberg, with an undercover dog rescue operation. It's here in the restaurants of Baguio. They're still openly selling dog meat on their menus. It's too dangerous for us to film openly around here. Dog meat traders have been caught out by camera crews before, and they now carry guns. But we obtained this undercover footage of dog dishes featured on menus, and Filipinos eating a meal of dog brains and dog liver with the dead animal's skull placed like a trophy on the table. And this undercover footage shot by local journalists documents a dog slaughter. It's just too graphic to show any more. Baguio, 2 p.m. Ellie has an appointment with the local police chief to ask him why more isn't being done to stop the illegal dog trading. But we're told he's down at the country club and we have to leave. It's 3.30 p.m., around an hour's drive north of Baguio. Animal Kingdom Foundation campaigner Brando will do what the police are not. Rigged with a hidden camera and posing as a new buyer, he will film the dog trading in action. With money Ellie's raised in New Zealand from internet donations and from her daughter Pip, Brando will try to buy 15 dogs destined for slaughter and take them back to the dog rescue centre. It's 4.30 p.m., the hour when the dog traders do business. While we wait down the road, Brando does the deal with the dog traders. He plans to use the hidden camera footage later to convince the police to bust the traders themselves. 5.10 p.m., Ellie's worried. The guys are overdue at the moment. The men that they're dealing with are fully armed with knives and guns. Our guys have gone in with hidden cameras. If they get frisked and caught with cameras on them, then I've got no idea what that outcome could be. It could be extremely nasty. Finally, Brando returns. Brando! Come here, I'm so well. Thank you. All right? <laughs> yeah, oh, thank that. God for that. In the rescue van are 15 dogs he's bought with the donated funds. So let's just follow. He's clearly rattled. There's no time to tend to the dogs. We follow the van out of the danger zone to somewhere safe. Oh, 
we've got half a dozen dogs um, tied up, the hind legs, four legs tied up, um, inside sugar sacks, rife sacks, um, the sacks are tied up, they've got no water, um, it's about 30 degrees, uh, they've been like that for the last 12, 24 hours, possibly even 48 hours from what we can understand from the locals. You know, the dogs are very distressed, um, their muzzles are tied up, uh, some of them aren't, some of them are. And if we can get them all back alive, I think we'll be doing a, a, a good job. We're lucky we've only got one day, don't we? Yeah. It's never nice hearing a dog in pain when one of them got its paw, its knee caught. So they'll free that when they get to the centre. The dogs will be put straight onto drips. The vets are waiting for us. Mission accomplished. Only one dead dog, 14 others rescued from the human food chain. We need to draw a line as to what is food and what is not. Dogs are not food and never will be. They're making friends with the dogs at the end, on the other side, they're moving towns. Ellie's work will now take her back to New Zealand for more fundraising, to help the rescued Filipino dogs get rehabilitated and adopted out as pets.